starting at Pop Century, and then we're about to be whisked away to... And here we go! And tell us where we're going. I don't know where we're going. Animal Kingdom. Oh, I'm like, this, this stops somewhere <laughs> else. This stops somewhere else, too. I don't, I don't know where it goes. We are on our way to the animal trek thing for the morning and then we're gonna go see we're making a quick pit stop to see the killers. Sorry we got distracted. Anyway, we are on our way to the we're on our way to Africa to do the Wild Africa Trek. Something that I've always wanted to do since I learned about it. And even though it's December, I'm celebrating my birthday today. I'm kind of gonna treat this as a birthday present. So I'm very excited to see behind the scenes, animal stuff, and I don't know. I don't know what else we're gonna do because I don't know too much about it. But I know it's cool and it's behind the scenes and I'm really excited about it. So here we are. You need to go check in. If you haven't already bought them online, you just come here. But this is where this is where you come to check in. Right next to right to the left of the baobab tree. And then we'll meet our crew. Four. I was 
seed. This is probably one of the most terrifying things I have done in my life. And then turn around and smile at me when you're done. Hi! You didn't wave. Oh, I have to wave? Oh, are you videoing? Yes. <laughs> Look at these terrifying bridges. I think the, what's working for me right now is just, just focusing on the steps. Don't focus on what is below. So that is what's scary. You kind of have to, I recommend moving with the, with the bridge to make it less scary. Oh, hey, little alligators or crocodiles. I think they're crocodiles. Oh, but they're fake. That's lame. I think they're, I don't know. Maybe they're real. And then over there is the hippo. on the steps. Don't move with There's the stairs. Look at. <laughs> we did it. How do you feel? Good. <laughs> All right. You can grab that carabiner. There's some water refill station down there for you. Yay. Were you scared? No. I was scared. You were scared? I was scared because it was high and moving. I felt secure enough that I wasn't scared. I know. Well, I also just held on to one hand and then just like videoed the whole thing. So at first, I thought those were fake crocodiles because they look kind of fake and then we kept going and I'm like oh no those are totally real. <laughs> totally real. What are you talking about? You see how long our bridge is. It's pretty terrifying. 
not that terrifying, but still scary. If I'd focused on stuff below me, I probably would have been like, and luckily it didn't like sway too much. We do have all males in here. Uh, and the reason for that, if you were to have all ladies, ladies tend to be actually more territorial than the, the, the males, surprisingly. Um, and if we had a mix of males and females, we would have to come down. Um, but they do um, fight for space, just like the majority of animals out here. They do get into little, um, little spits. Just a cat doing cat thing. This is Kyle. He's our driver. So say hey to Kyle. He's very important. If it wasn't for him, we'd just kind of be standing here. So um, <laughs> just jump. Yeah. So we just be like, oh, this is cool. Um, so we're gonna do a little step-by-step -step process to take the steer off. Yeah. Now we're gonna go on another adventure. What are we gonna do? See some animals. See some more animals. Some furry animals, from what we were told. same location. Um, so we talked a little bit way back when about sound cues um, and the birds. Um, we got to see our hippo keeper bang on the bucket. That was hippo's sound cue in order to come station or move. Clearly they can choose whether or not they want to listen to it. Um, but all animals are going to have a different sound cue which is super important out here in West Savannah because imagine if they all had the same sound cue <laughs> and they just wanted like the wildebeest to come in. That would be super not fun for everyone on the safari because they wouldn't really see any animals, right? You're like Dr. Um, Doolittle. <laughs> yeah, like, like all the animals, like a Snow White, all the animals rushing towards you. It sounds majestic in your head, but would be disastrous in real life. Um, we are going to get a look at our Ancoli cattle up ahead. We already heard Ace a little bit ago with his dramatic murr. He's going to be the all brown one. Um, looks like we have Dixie Jane and maybe Audrey, a couple of the ladies out as well. Um, so Ancoli cattle are used as a symbol of wealth in many African nations, so not for milk or meat. Um, it's actually a really cool app. It's called the Bulba, where you guys can see how many Ancoli cattle you are worth. It's a very invasive quiz, just letting you know, but I am worth six Ancoli cattle. It's out of 20, so not. <laughs> <laughs> but essentially, if you were a man and you wanted to marry a woman, you had to go to her father and say, your daughter is worth 13 cows. You are these cows. So would be like a huge deal. Which would be a big deal. We had a lady on the track one time that has like a PhD and has done all this very good marriage and stuff. I can't say that word. And she said she was worth like 12 cattle and it was like the biggest honor of her life. Oh, it's man. Crazy, huh. yeah. So I guess half of that, is, I should take that as an honor. It's a uh, quarter, this is yeah. Adiola right here. She's got those almost circular horns on. The horns aren't as heavy as they look. They transfer blood through them and help keep them cool and regulate their body temperature. But also notice how these trees have like a mesh, like a netting on them. That's because the Imagineers, or a fancy word for Disney engineer, want them to look like acacia trees from Africa. They really just Florida to live oak trees and they don't want the giraffes to eat and destroy them every day. But out going to be on the driver's side is one of my favorite habitats because it's a dual habitat. So during the mornings and days, sometimes you can catch a glimpse of some of our African wild dogs or our painted dogs. And then around four o'clock in the afternoon, they'll shift off and the hyenas shift on. But looks just to the right of the den. Um, so that's a good view right there. Um, you're gonna catch a glimpse of some of those sleepy rolling around in some hay African wild dogs. Make sure we keep our seats for me. Yeah, I'll get a better look as we round the corner here. 
Um, so we do have all brothers here. A lot of them are named after Batman characters. <laughs> uh, we do have our more top dogs, um, Oswald and Alfred. Um, Hugo's kind of in the middle. Uh, then we have Riddler and Bruce more towards the bottom. But even though they have a little bit of that social hierarchy, they will all work together, which is why they have the highest hunting success rate of like any other animal over in Africa. Um, we're also going to have the Los Moors looking antelopes. Those are my favorite. They're springbok. Uh, they do something really cute called pronking. They jump six feet in the air, 13 feet forward, with all four hooves off the ground at once. That's to evade cheetahs, because well, they're also called cheetah chips. So imagine if I took a bouncy ball and threw one bouncy ball at you, you'd probably catch it. If I threw 50 bouncy balls at you, you'd be like, oh, I don't know which one to catch. Same idea. Um, those tan antelopes far off in the back, those are sable antelopes. I like to call them Bad Girls Club of the Safari because they are one of the antelopes of a fight response rather than a flight response. Those horns curve backwards, so if a predator tries to jump on their back, you get the idea. Um, they're also one of the few antelopes that can change fur color based on how dominant they are. So our darkest brown one, her name is Ruby, she's the matriarch. If she were to go to another zoo or vice versa, she would gain or lose that fur color. But looks like we have one of our pretty lady oh. giraffes right here. We do have 11 giraffes and five baby giraffes. Dave was talking about baby giraffes earlier and he seemed so thrilled about them. Yeah, so thrilled. <laughs> um, but again, it's really great that we have the five babies here. We have our breeder male, his name is George. He is the dad of all of them, but they have five different moms. So they've been doing a really great job and look at that majestic drool. <laughs> look at that. If you're lucky, maybe it will whip onto your face. <laughs> what an honor. <laughs> Davis, do you know who she is? It's is a Stephanie? giraffe. That's well, she's got the little <laughs> hidden Mickey spot on the side that makes make me think that it's either Stephanie. Um, it's we do have a baby Patterson Leland that was born not too long ago during like Hurricane Dorian time. So his name is Doppler. Antelope out on the passenger side. Um, we're gonna get to see uh, lots of giraffes up ahead. We're gonna get a great look at two of our little ones. Gonna be out on the passenger side. They are getting so big, they look small to us. But you think about the fact of we're at least four to six feet off the ground right now. So it's really great. You get to see the keepers come out here and you see that like Aww, the babies, babies are like already taller. Than Hi, them, baby. This is insane. I love the giraffe selfies that are occurring right now. Um, you'll also see our wildebeest gonna be out here, um, as well as that strange looking log thing. Um, that's gonna be an automatic feeder. Sometimes they'll put <laughs> water in it too. Um, I heard the adult giraffes, um, sometimes when it like clinks around in the bowl, they're like, I don't like it, I don't know about it, but the babies love it. They'll take full advantage of all the hidden food. Um, you're also gonna get to see our baobab tree. I like to say, it used to be kind of like Sabo, and I never thought that he was gonna be able to be here um, until all of a sudden you were just like, eh, all about it. He's become the most people love training. Um, the elephants, they'll, you know, let me use the flipper, press all the pills, step on. Notice how far away he is from the little ones. Um, those are the two teen boys over there. He is supposed to be the peacekeeper, the gentle giant that keeps them in check. Um, but recently he's been uh, pretty over their, uh, pretty over their drama. Uh, so Savo's in the back. Um, he's the one in the back. He's the 11 year old. He has a really long tail here. And then Jabali's gonna be to the right. And so this is really interesting. So, see how much bigger a plane is than Sava, right? So this kind of shows that they have that good relationship because if a plane wanted to, you could just throw him over and be done with him when they're sparring. But he's not doing that. And as well, he's coming over and getting in on it too. So that's one of the most trusting things that you can do. Um, there's thousands and thousands of muscles in an elephant's throat. Jabali's on the right and McLean's being a model in the middle. They can hold about 10 <laughs> gallons of water in that trunk before they put it up in their mouth. So see how Savo has his ears kind of flailed out a little bit? Uh, that's a dominance display, him saying I'm the more dominant elephant. This has been so cool. We just did a little safari kind of trekking around in here. Got to know the animals names, got to know a little bit about some of the animals and now we're here this little lodge area and we're going to have a little bit of lunchy lunch and yeah get some nom noms which i'm very excited about 
So they're prepping our tables. That's Davis. That's our other tour guide, Donica. And now we're getting some noms. There's our little, our little bus. Bus. And then, yeah. So this is the little lodge that we're noticing at. So there's the little baby, baby elephants, in quotes. They were just sparring a little bit ago. I know. And then there's our little flamboyant or group of flamingos. And then we've got a baby giraffe coming! And there's like, the, I think they said Katahuli cattle. And then there's a, like a little wildebeest. There's a bunch of little wildebeest just relaxing here. Got some antelope and stuff in the background. All the buses. <coughs> some bayou box trees. Underneath there, there's a bit of a spoon. That's to help you eat uh, this stuff. <laughs> so, you know, got a couple finger foods. But uh, there's a seasonal fruit salad, kind of a mint honey glaze on it, nice and refreshing. Uh, there's also going to be a chicken curry salad. That's that yellow stuff. Don't be scared of the word curry. It is not spicy. It's a yellow curry. It's nice and uh, kind of a tropical chicken salad almost. Really good. And then there's also going to be some dried meats. The darker stuff's going to be air dried beef, and the lighter stuff's prosciutto. If you lift up on that top part, you'll see some more. It'll be three peat arounds, and that's for that sun dried tomato hummus with some sesame uh, seeds sprinkled on top of it. Uh, there's also going to be two poached tandoori shrimp. Tandoori shrimp, but tandoori is kind of like an African barbecue sauce I compare it to. The last thing in there is a salmon roulade. So it's some chilled salmon with some cream cheese and chai, all rolled together in potato bread, and it's on a bed of jicama and cucumber slaw. If you're not familiar with jicama, it's a tuber, kind of like a potato and an apple had a baby. Um, <laughs> we got some cups for you guys there. A couple different options for drinks. We have a mixture of passion fruit, orange juice, and guava over here. We call it jungle juice, um, but it's not like jungle juice from college. Uh, <laughs> it's really good. So it's edible, okay? Okay. Yeah. It just tastes like lettuce. <laughs> good to know. It doesn't taste, it has a little perfumey taste to it, but. That's good. Right. Try it. See what you mean about the letters? It tastes like a bland piece of lettuce. We have our white rhino. She's she's a little over four now. And then back in the back is actually her mother. Her mom was the first first white rhino that was born in the park, which is pretty cool. He's had like four calves herself, which is pretty awesome. White rhino uh, are called white rhino because it's a misinterpretation of the word white, which means wide in Afrikaans. So if you look at their lips, see the big old lips? They're like big lawnmowers. There's also two types of herbivores. There's browsers and grazers. Grazers eat grass. That's how I remember it. Browsers eat bushes. So these guys are grazers. They're like big lawnmowers, eat all that grass. And then the black rhino native to Africa, they are browsers. So they eat bushes and shrubs. And this is their day spa right here, the mud wallow. Just like elephants, uh, they have really thick skin, but it's very sensitive. But they don't like bugs on them. They also don't like getting sunburnt. Uh, so the wallow in the mud, like a pig would. The funny thing is, see those big shoulder humps between their shoulder blades, that big ridge right there? Yeah. That big ridge prevents them from rolling over. <laughs> it's a huge muscle to support their head because their head's so heavy. But because of that, they can't roll over. So whenever they wallow in the mud, they do this like fall and like jiggle thing. And then they'll stand all the way back up and fall on the other side and kind of jiggle again. And you're like, y'all look ridiculous. And normally there's like a perfect little line going down their back that they can't get mud on. But the one on the far right that looks a little darker in color, uh, that's actually our male. He came here a little while ago. He's relatively new in town, getting to know the ladies, uh, which is pretty exciting. He was only housed with his brother before, so uh, safari trucks and girls were a very new thing when he came here. <laughs> Antelope here with the horns right in front of us is a bounty ball. Kind of like cousins of the wildebeest. 
And then the one off in the distance there that looks like a fuzzy donkey is a water lover. So fuzzy donkey. <laughs> Kinda does. So they're very closely related to the Blesbok, another antelope, and the only difference between them is Blesbok has an all white face and Bonzi Bok has that brown bar that goes from high down. See the male lion too. He's kind of on that back, uh, behind her a little bit on that grassy knoll. So we have a total of three lions that live in the park. Uh, we have two lionesses and a male in our pride. He's ten, they're nine. She's enjoying that sunlight. That's lovely. <laughs> and then her sister's uh, kind of back behind him. You can see her, her little snoot a little bit. Those big paws. Living the dream, guys. That is the end of our tour. We had lunch, we went and saw a little bit more animals. We got a vote for our favorite animal that we wanted to um, donate to uh, represent the conservative or conservation. And so that was cool. I voted for the drabs and all the hooved animals. Eric donated to the elephants. It was so fun! We saw plenty of mammals. We got pretty up close to a lot of them, including the baby giraffes. Apparently they have six baby giraffes right now. How cute is that? I wish we could have six baby giraffes at our zoo. I don't really have the favorite part. I think all of it, like the whole experience in general, was really my favorite thing out of all of it. What about you? Favorite part? Everything. <laughs> I don't really have a favorite part. <laughs> a little like me. You gotta cr Maybe crossing the bridges was my favorite part because it was a little intimidating. It felt more like a a trek. I don't know. I think. And then, I mean, the the walking through the brush was no different than any hiking adventure I've done. Just different. I felt kind of like I was intruding, but we were following our guides like we were supposed to. So that's pretty much our adventure. As I said, we're going to have some birthday fun, we're headed over to Pandora, but just wanted to tell you about our Wild Africa trek, which I highly recommend. Take a drive, take a drive